conversation number three around sustainable business. What does it mean? Because it means different things to different people, right? And I know we've got some very passionate um, sustainable business owners and drivers here. Um, but, you know, you talk about still doing stuff that we were doing 30 years ago. Like, that doesn't feel very sustainable to me. Um, and some people, you know, some people have been talking since COVID hit around Mother Earth having a lot to say. And it feels like it, right? She's delivered She's forced a change upon us by stopping most of what people thought was normal everyday business. You know, you look at airlines. I don't know when airlines are going to recover. Like maybe they never will. Maybe it will go back to 1970s, something that only the rich and famous can afford to do. You know, it's kind of like, what is the world going to look like? So what does sustainability mean to us? And I think there's business models that haven't even been imagined yet. You know, and when you sit down to do a business case and Victoria was talking about it, about discounted cash flows, you go, oh, my God, like that just feels like it's it's not one size fits all. <laughs> Joyce, you're you haven't spoken yet. Let's hear from you. You uh, you're a huge sustainability um, driver because that's your business around um, the, you know, the, the work, the social impact work that you do and and what you get people to invest in. What does sustainable business mean to you? Thank you, Paula. Um, I'm enjoying the conversation. And um, when I reflect about sustainability, that is all that I do. And uh, in the last 15 years, I've been involved in the development sector from the public health to supporting women and children. And so in the last three years, when I moved out to run my own company, which is uh, Capital Solutions, it's a social enterprise, everything we do is around sustainability. So putting sustainability to context is that uh, sustainability is about the capacity or the ability to coexist so that there's nothing that you compromise out of the three specific areas of social, economic, and environmental. And that is what I would wrap up with people, planet, and profits. So companies that really work around those three areas will be able to survive. And so sustainability is around making sure that you do not necessarily um, increase the shareholders' value but it's about setting the mission with purpose so that you are able to address the key areas that would erode the bottom line of, an, of a company. And this would include human rights, um, human, uh, personnel management and engagement, community engagement. So it's no longer about a company that makes huge profits. What would sustain businesses at the moment is about designing a company that serves beyond the shareholders. How much does the community benefit? How do you care about the environment? How do you engage beyond the human stuff that you're engaging, but the communities around? If you're a manufacturing company, do you care about the environment? How do you fumigate you know, the, the environments around you? How do you uh, dispose of the plastics? Can you be able to you know, recycle them? So that is all about the sustainability. And uh, I've enjoyed the conversations because quite often companies do some bits of CSR, you know, once in a while, but just to show their brand out there and they do not track the impact that this is causing to the communities. And so in the conversations we've had, I've realized that the models that really focus on profit alone or models that profit on uh, community alone will not be sustainable. However, looking at a social business, a business model that looks at the profitability of the shareholders, those who started it, that is more visionary, as well as how do we satisfy the communities where we work. Mm -hmm. And as finance professionals, Having been a CFO before I was a CEO of a public health company, I realized that at the center of every company, at the heart of a company, the CFOs sit there. And so you interpreting the whole aspect of your financial statements and ensuring that your board of directors interpret the sustainability, which is financial sustainability, as well as the overall sustainability, is what every company needs. And I'm very, very passionate about this because if you don't pay attention to sustainability, your company will be eroded. And so we need to really make sure that when we set business plans, when we set strategic plans, that should be at the center, where I keep saying that the head and the heart 
work together. Yeah. And so that is the only way you will survive. Even now that COVID has, has shown us that it's not all about money. You will have all the money and then what? The yeah. question will be what about next year? So for me, you know, embedding the whole conversation of sustainability is very central in the boardrooms, in the communities, but also with the staff that we yeah. engage. Yeah. I think it's so important, um, Joyce, you make so many good points there. You know, I think those companies that bring out the CSR box um, do the same when they're talking about diversity. They're just doing compliance. They're just doing checklists. They're not, it's just playing at the surface. Like, I think business will have a future as the business that can actually play at the depth where it actually enables that head and heart. Um, because you're absolutely right. We're, we're seeing people looking at brands and going, what are you doing? How are you acting? How are you treating your assets, your staff, your people? You know, and I think people are becoming more and more socially aware that they say that's not good enough anymore. And yes, it's going to take time. Um, but, you know, I heard, I was having a conversation with someone who I do admire in business. And he said to me, Paula, I hear what you're saying about having that sustainable and bringing the heart into business. He said, but at the end of the day, he who owns the money makes the rules. I was like, why does it have to be like that? I don't, that's not good enough. I don't, I don't, I'm not buying into that. <laughs> what do you see, Kaleka? Because you're on a number of boards, right? You've talked about moving into that um, board more role rather than the CFO role. What do you What's your feelings around sustainability and, and how, because it's hard, right? For getting boards to make that mental shift, for shareholders to make that shift in their returns. Um, what I've seen, Paula, and fortunately in South Africa, uh, we've got what we call King Four. And uh, it's very strong on integrated reporting Mm. Every listed company basically has to comply with King 4. So it really forces you to, to look at, in sustain, at sustainability at all levels. Not only because sometimes we just think sustainability is about the environment. Mm. It's also about people. Mm. Because, um, you know, after the capital has been injected into a company, obviously you've got to take care of your people. And for me, the COVID has shown that if you do not take care of your people, not only as a, as a company, but also as a country. Um, South Africa, as you know, the history comes from a very bad history. So you find a larger population is, is very disadvantaged. Mm. And part of... Um, Part of um, the government's uh, policies are about uh, transformation. And some people think transformation is only about just replacing uh, a person of color, I mean, a white person with a person of color. Mm -hmm. But if you really implement transformation in its true sense, inclusivity, isn't it? We talk about inclusivity. If inclusivity is in your DNA as a company, mm. uh, you know, transformation in the sense of South Africa can be very easy. Mm. Uh, because I always say that if the greater population is not empowered, doesn't have jobs, doesn't have housing, you know, can't eat, you can never have a stable society. Mm. Would you want to do business? in an unstable society. So it's, it makes business sense. So sometimes you have to make such analogies with people. And sometimes we don't realize that we've always been in an ecosystem. Mm. And the word has only come up with digital, but I said we've always been in an ecosystem. We depend on each other. An ecosystem is about collaboration. Yeah, and I think that um, that absolutely has come to the fore now with COVID around, you know, there's less competition and more collaboration. Um, yes. I'm using this yeah. term as uh, frenemies. Have you heard of frenemies? They're like your yeah. enemies, yes. but actually you want to be friends with them. Friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. So, yeah. Joseph, we've, um, we've talked a lot, even within ACCA conversations around 
the owner of sustainability and I kind of feel like I'm, I know what you're going to say, but you know, what's your view on where does sustainability fit in an organization? Uh, you know, it's still that tone at the top. I think that's where our basic accounting um, conceptual framework comes in. You know, the tone at the top, either it's internal control, all of that. We always talk about tone at the top. If it's cyber security, we talk about tone at the top. But still, everybody needs to change from the way we, you know, brush our teeth to have our bath. All of that needs to change the way we use plastics and all of that. But for organizations to lead, it has to be the guy, you know, uh, the CEO or the board, depending on how the structure, the power structure is for that organization. Companies can do better. They can do more. Governments have started doing some things. We know of the climate um, summits that we had some six or so years ago in, uh, in Paris. Uh, and we know that the, a lot of uh, governments are falling behind on that. Australia, you are aware, has a long way to go. But we've seen the UK um, in recent months uh, come up with the Green Finance uh, Education Charter, which is to provide a framework for education around what are the capital structures necessary to build the, that sustainable future? Because it's going to cost money, right? Yeah. All of those things, you know, it's going to cost money to move from traditional. Transition. Say again? It's the transitions, right? The, yeah, the transition is going to cost a lot of money. So, with yeah, all of the economies from Germany to the UK, China, still heavily dependent on coal. Hmm. Even in Australia here, most of the power generation is coming from coal or fossil fuel. And so, um, you know, economists have estimated that we need about 2% annual investments of 2% of global GDP every year for the next 30 mm. years or so mm. to, to deal with climate change. So that's a lot of money. And it, where is it going to come from? It's going to come from people believing that that's the way forward. Yeah. I think for me, sometimes we forget there's a political undertone here and that's causing more harm than good. So in countries like the US, as we've seen in some parts of Europe, far right movement, believing that, you know, sustainability, all of that is just, you know, it's a hoax and it's not, it's not real. And that's helping uh, with that uh, movement. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you've seen it, Rashidat, in uh, big business, because I know you're part of a big global. Um, but, you know, I often say to people, surely the business case is that there's no business unless we do this transformation, unless we change and become more sustainable. We won't have a future. What other business case do you want? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you, people, people have different ways of looking at it. The big businesses have to. I, I like Joseph's point, Joseph's point on the tone from the top. Very important. But I believe that we're all responsible as we invest in companies, we should walk with our feet away from companies who aren't taking the right decisions. We should vote with our money. Where do you want to put the money as employees? We should decide that, you know, we want to be part of the drivers of change. So within our group, you know, of course, you know, we're based in France and we're very, very particular about climate. When we stopped investing in tobacco, it was a big roar, like, no, what's happening? We now have more companies saying they're not doing tobacco. We're talking about our footprints now and talking about climate change. And we're taking some decisions around that. We're actually moving our money to companies who are more diversity inclusive as a, as a group, you know, to, to ensure that we're backing it up with our own actions. And it isn't easy. I think the recent thing we did is to extend our purpose. We typically, our, our former purpose was empowering people to live a better life as AXA. And we've now moved that to saying that we want to act for human progress by protecting what matters. We are an insurance company. We do protect people, right? But if we don't act for human progress by taking key actions from our own sustainability, you know, uh, you know, activities beyond just spending money on a nice advert, buying t-shirts, walking, you know, painting buildings. It definitely has to go beyond this. So the, the action has to start from big companies, but even small companies have a uh, faster ability to, to be agile. They can move. And, and all of us just need to hold each other more accountable to make sure there is a business. If it's all gone, there's nothing. There's nothing. And, and we saw that in COVID, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. we're all strong. <laughs> well, I think finance professionals are well-placed because we've got ethics and values at the heart of everything we do. So similar to lawyers or, you know, engineers or, you know, people of that kind of um, sort of, you know, disciplines have got that very close to their, to their chest. And I think as consumers, 
we, um, so I heard something new yesterday from a radio show called a prosumer. So it's a, someone who's a consumer, but someone who's promoting. So if you think about Instagram, you're prosuming because you're a promoter, but you're consuming as well. It's, it's obviously a, a Gen Y kind of term, I think, but I quite like it. Um, but I think you're right. People will vote with their feet because there's just more awareness. Um, and so it's being driven from a number of different aspects. Again, it goes back to that, what level are you playing at? Are you playing at the surface or are you playing at the depth? Like, you know, do you actually really mean what it is you say? And I think COVID, someone else said it this evening, COVID shines a light. It, it, it holds a mirror up to business, but it also shines a light and it magnifies where there's challenges. And I think that is what's key to transformation. And those businesses that don't transform, they won't last. I'd, I'd be surprised if we look back in 10 years and see some big names of business that aren't doing the right thing. And we've had cases this week in Australia of big business doing the wrong thing. And it comes as no surprise to anybody on this call, I'm sure. Um, but you think, how are we still getting away with this? This is like unacceptable. Okay. All right. Well, let me get off my soapbox and move on to the next conversation. 